Happy Sunday guys! This is Jenny and today we're going to look at how to get better color with your white toner printer. We are going to use Photoshop. You can use any editing software. It's going to look a little bit different but the idea is to be able to convert your images or your photographs to um, a CMYK image and then import them into ProRip. So these are the two images that we're going to work on this this morning and let's go ahead and take a look at our very first one. So on the left on this image this is the original image I designed in Procreate which you get the best results in Procreate if you use RGB color mode. So then we converted it or I converted it uh, to CMYK in Photoshop, made sure that my colors were CMYK compatible, and then this is the pressed image. Now note that you will not get, you will never get this on to look just like this on a shirt. Um, this is a backlit background, you know, because of the computer, and the colors are much more vibrant due to the lighting from the computer. And we also have, you know, just a much higher color spectrum. So I think I did pretty good here. Um, the colors are very, very similar. Uh, and this is on a black shirt. And notice that a black shirt is not quite as dark as a black background. So I highly recommend that you use a more of a charcoal gray when you're doing designing uh, for dark images instead of black. So let's go ahead and open up a new Photoshop document and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to File New. I am going to select, uh, we can go over here to Print and choose A4 and I'm going to change this to a transparent background. Now I'm going to use RGB so I can show you because most people forget to change this. So I will use RGB and show you how to change it to um, a CMYK image. So and I've changed it to portrait mode. Or I'm sorry to landscape mode. All right let's go ahead and get started. Okay so here's the PNG file. Let me go ahead and drag that in and I'm just going to hit enter to accept it. So this is, like I said, an RGB image. The first thing I want to do is go up to Image in Photoshop and change the color mode to CMYK. And I'm sure you can do this in Corel or Affinity. Um, I will go ahead and rasterize it. I don't normally, but I'll go ahead and do that. Then we're going to create a new layer, a kind of a background layer. Uh, by pressing this plus button over here on the right next to the trash can on the bottom right of this of your Photoshop screen. And then I'm just going to pull this down to the bottom and shift F5 which is uh, fill. Uh, you can also go to edit fill and then we're going to go with a color and this would be pure black down here and I'm going to use this more of a charcoal color. Again, a, a black shirt is never really fully black. Okay, so now you have an idea of what your shirt will look like. And now really the only thing we want to do is we want to knock out this black and just check to make sure that our colors are going to fit in the CMYK gamut. So I am going to create an adjustment layer. You can go up to layer. I'm sorry, we're going to create a, a mask. So the first thing we're going to do is layer, layer mask. Or you can also do it down here with the square with the circle in it down on the bottom right. All right, we'll take our magic wand tool, which is this one right here. You can also click W for the magic wand tool. Just make sure you're on the wand. And we are going to click on the black and making sure that our layer mask is selected. That's why there's a box around it. We're just going to go to Shift F5 and choose black. Now when you use black, um, when you fill with black on a layer mask, it, it erases it, but it doesn't do permanent damage to your design. So it's still there. You can get it back by just right clicking and choosing disable the layer mask. 
Okay, so now let's take a look at our colors. So I'm just going to get our eyedropper tool here and let's click on this pink. Oops, go back on the image, click on the pink. Now what you're looking for is you, you want the color, you know, you want this color to be available um, in CMYK without a triangle. So the triangle is this right here. And when that triangle shows up, that means that that color will not print properly in CMYK. Okay, so we're going to leave that color that we have there. Now we're going to go to the green, make sure that that's good. It is. Now there is some black in here. I think it's probably okay. Uh, but we can make that a zero. And just, you know, you choose. You don't want to go really dark. Um, let me get that again. So I think I'm going to leave that black. But again, you can, you know, go up, over, you know, depending on what color you want. So I'm going to hit OK. Now let's check the orange. Now I know that this orange um, is supposed to be um, M70 and Y100. And so it's close, but it's not quite what I wanted. So we're going to change that to a 70 and the Y, which is the yellow, to 100. And then we're going to hit OK. And we are going to get our magic wand tool. And we're just going to click on that orange. And we're going to add a new layer by going down to the bottom right, choosing the plus sign, and then Shift F5 or Edit Fill. And we're going to choose our foreground color, which is the color we just selected. And hit OK. And Command D. <clears throat> and so if you notice, it's hard to tell. Let me let me get up there really good for you. There's some extra black or holes in there. So what we're going to do to make sure that we get keep all that transparency or all those holes is we're just going to right click on the layer over on the right panel and we are going to create a clipping mask. So now the color is slightly different. You can't even tell, but it is slightly different. Now let's take a look at the red. Now everybody's always asking, how do I get the best red? And the cherry red or the fire engine red or coca-cola red is 0c 100m and 100y and so that's the color that we want to use here so we're going to hit ok and now we're going to go back on our layer you know on our image and we're going to hit our magic wand tool and we're going to click on that red we're going to add a new layer it is automatically going to clip it to the bottom because we had a clipping mask above it. So now I'm just going to hit Shift F5, foreground color again, and that will make it that fire engine red. And so let's just continue checking to make sure our colors are working. Let's go to that green. Okay, so that one has a little tiny bit of black. It should be okay. And then let's check this yellow. Okay, and that one should also be okay. Um, there's no black in it, which is very good. We should be able to get a very accurate representation of that. And then we're going to hit okay. So now, if you'll see, we have our transparent. I just unchecked the black layer that we came up with, that we added. Now I've got the checkerboard, so that means that our background is transparent. So what we want to do here is the first thing we want to do is delete this black layer because we're going to save this as a PDF and then we're going to bring it into ProRip as a PDF. And that is going to give you your most accurate colors because a PDF is a vector. However, if you don't merge your layers together, it's going to export, you know, you're going to save it as a PDF file and it's going to have a background which is going to be white in ProRip. Uh, we don't want white because we actually have some white text. So 
And we don't want to, you know, we always would prefer to have a transparent background. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the layer menu up here on the top of the ribbon. Choose Merge Visible. That puts everything into one single file, you know, one single layer. And then we're going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to save it to my iCloud Drive. That's what I use since I use Parallels. Uh, and with and Windows on my Mac since it's it's not a Windows machine and I'm just going to call this get lucky class whoops file and then I'm going to change it this is very important to change your format to Photoshop PDF and I'm not going to save it as layers so it'll make it a copy then I'm gonna hit save and now we will head over to uh, choose the highest Acrobat that version that you have. I'm going to use Acrobat 8. Save PDF. And now we're going to head over to ProRip, which I'm already there. Let me go ahead and delete this file out. Oops. Okay, and here we are in ProRip. Let's go ahead and set up our queue. I'm going to use my iColor 800. We're going to use standard paper here. And we've got our A4 paper size. Now, one of the things that we have some white text, so we want to make sure that this is not white, because otherwise we won't be able to see our text. So we're going to go to Jobs, and you see mine is gray, but I'm going to show you how to do yours. You're going to go to, I'm sorry, you're going to go to Queue, Properties. And in the general menu, which is the first thing that pops up, you're going to see substrate color. Click on that box and you can choose any of these colors. I believe the default is white, but mine is always gray, unless I'm doing a gray design, which is pretty rare. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit OK there. And now my substrate color is going to be gray. Okay, now let's import our file. And again, that is a PDF. So we're going to hit open. Okay, so we're going to click on our file. We're going to go down here to the right because you see it's extending past the edge of the paper. We're going to choose rotate 90 degrees. And because it's a PDF, it's going to fit exactly correctly. Um, sometimes when you bring in a PNG file, you know, you have to kind of go up here. Uh, and choose fit to page but but because it's PDF we are all set um, we'll go over to color adjust and we're going to uncheck enable ink removal because we have a file that already has negative space added um, this is a graphics file so we'll choose graphics now I have an 800 I'm gonna boost my black 5 now on a 600 or a 550 or maybe an Oki, uh, I would I would go high on that um, just to get your rich blacks. It just makes the colors more black. But the 800 just has a huge uh, color range, and it it, it just re really makes incredible color. So graphics, we can increase our chroma to 10. Um, I did not here. So I'm just going to leave it at zero. I just left mine all alone. In fact, I believe I even came in as ICC setting. But we'll go back to graphic. Um, and we're good there. So now we're going to go up to our color palette, job, replace, job color replacement tool. And we're going to check on those colors because orange and red are tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide my screen over so I have Photoshop right here in the back and I'm going to check my colors so that I've got my eyedropper tool and that is 77 magenta 3.9 yellow so let's go over here and get the eyedropper tool and it's 5, 5C76M. So I'm going to hit cancel. And I am going to go back over to ProRip. 
and we're gonna go five cyan okay five and 76 hit the plus sign and then we are going to check our green you don't have to do this every time uh, my greens printed out okay um, but let's go ahead and do it so now let's do our eyedropper tool here and this one is 85 20 and 96 and so we'll go over on the green choose 85 and 96 hit the plus plus sign now we're going to do our orange and let's come back over here and hit the orange and that is 70 and 100 and that not cyan and I have done that before so it's 70 magenta and 100 yellow hit the plus sign and now let's do the red and I happen to know this one by heart that's gonna be for candy apple red or coca-cola red it's zero cyan 100 magenta and 100 yellow I like a 10 cyan um, it just gives it a, to me it gives it a little bit richer color and keeps it from being too orange I'm gonna hit the plus sign there and then you will continue doing that I'm not going to take all your time doing that so you'll you'll continue doing that if you want and now all you have to do is hit apply hit OK and then to make sure that you the change has happened you're just going to hit that bird with the check mark the color replacement preview do not panic it looks horrific um, but it will look fine um, on your on your print now if I were you I would print this on plain paper and just take your white down to zero so you can just take your white coverage down to zero so you don't waste that precious white and print that on white paper just to make sure you're okay with the color uh, but that is all we have to do here so I am just going to hit print or if you want to just make sure you can go rip only view raw data and then you can see you know the gray background and then if you want to see exactly what's going to print just view all colors as black and now you can see that anything that's gray will not be printed anything that black will that is black will so um, let me move this over and close that out and we are ready to print so you'll just click here and hit your print button okay so this is the image that we are going to print on our uh, black shirt and we are going to use Photoshop and we are going to use ProRip. Now you can also just use ProRip and it will turn out fine. It won't be quite as good but it will turn out fine and I'll show you all the different methods. I got this photograph on Unsplash. It is a unsplash.com. Uh, the link to the photo will be below but I highly recommend uh, that you check out that website for you know free photographs. So let me close this out. Now, this is the original photo that you just saw. Let me get rid of these extras here. Okay, so here's the original photo. Now, personally, this um, I did this one in Photoshop, and I used halftones. And there's a video on our YouTube page that shows you how to do this. But frankly, I felt like this one turned out the worst. So I would not recommend this photograph to do half tones. And we're not going to go into that today. But if you want to learn how to do that, you can check it out on our YouTube page. Now, the next option is the original photo with knock me black out and pro rip. And I neglected to uncheck the, you, you know, remove toner in areas of partial transparency um, and so really and truly the original photo 
printed pretty good. I would boost your blacks all the way up for that, uh, but I think we can do better. So let's see what option three is, and I will show you how to do these next two options. Okay, so this one I used Knock Me Black Out in Pro Rip for all the rasterization, and I just increased the blacks and the saturation in Photoshop. Now I'm sure you can do the same thing in Corel or Affinity. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that, uh, but I'm sure it, it can't be that complicated. Um, okay, so this is option three, which I think turned out pretty well, and that is the cover of this video page. But the one that I thought that turned out the most was this one. Oops, sorry. Is this one. I thought it turned out the most accurate. Um, you know, let me, let me move the photograph over. Oh, now let me just move this photo so you can see what I mean. So it, it while it is not perfect, it, a photograph is going to be almost impossible to make the colors perfect. It is pretty close. You know, you do have blue, um, and you've got this blue over here, you've got some purple, you've got the green. So this one to me, um, you know, get purple stripe here, you've got the silver in the wall. I thought this one turned out the best. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this one. Okay, so let's open a new file. And we're going to use that same custom 300 pixels uh, A4. And let's pull in. In fact, I'll show you all a little trick. So let's do, let's go back over to this one and I'm just going to take this original photo because I really don't want to wait for it to open and I'm just going to drag it up onto this layer and now we can move it and because it's a smart object, hit command T, because it's a smart object right here, you're not going to lose any of the quality by resizing it. So let's make sure we have enough room for our paper. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this bottom layer with a charcoal color. So let's go back over to color. And, you know, there's that same color that I usually use. I'm going to hit OK and OK. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Image, Mode, and change it to CMYK color. We're not going to merge that. And we can go ahead and rasterize the image if we want to. Okay, so now we are in CMYK mode. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up and do an image adjustment. So, but I want to do that as a layer mask. So new Im adjustment layer. And we're going to do levels. And this, this handle is your blacks. This handle is your whites. And this is the easy way that you can see your, you know, our scale here. So I'm just going to pull those blacks down. So Pro Rip will have no problem finding the blacks. We just don't want any of that gray, those little gray remnants. Now you can take your midtones and move them up if you want to keep that brightness. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. And I'm going to hit OK. Close that out. And now we're going to do one more adjustment. And this time we're going to use our hue saturation. All right, and we are going to boost our hue, our saturation. Now you can really get crazy, as you can see here, but we're not going to get too much. We're going to probably go maybe about 32, because what happens is when you remove black and remove color, it looks unsaturated. So by boosting the saturation, it helps you keep that color. All right, and now we're going to close that out. And so now we'll just turn off our black 
and we will export this as a PNG font. And I've already done this in ProRip, so let's pop over to ProRip. And we're going to, again, uh, make sure that our queue is set properly. So we're in two-step standard. Our gray is there from the where we did it the last time. And let's go to Color Adjust. I'm going to turn off ink removal because we only want ink to be removed from the Knock Me Blackout. So I'm going to uncheck that. We don't want Not Me Blackout to include some additional transparency for this photograph. Um, just because we've already boosted our blacks, we know what is going to be removed. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to bring in our image. OK, I'm going to click on there. And we're going to rotate it. And now we are going to choose this one to fit it to the page. OK, so now we're all set here. We're going to go to Jobs, Production Plugins, Knock Me Blackout. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And we'll focus on the eyes and see how we do there. So this is the default setting. If you turn on the shirt color, it looks pretty good. You're, you can see already that we are definitely going to miss parts of that cheek. Um, but that's what we have to work with. Now you can also increase your under base. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see that chin. We can increase our under base and notice that it fills in a little bit. But you are going to lose, by doing that, you're going to lose some negative space. Let's, let's, um, let's show the under base. So by doing that, by moving this around, you know, making it, moving it to the left, you're going to get more, and moving it to the right, it's going to get darker. So I'm going to make this one about 100. And then you can also, and again, pay, pay attention here, you can also move this opacity. So what you do print is not going to be transparent. Don't move that too much because you, you still need the negative space. So let's just poke around and see if we are going to have enough negative space. And that's the white that you see. That's our negative space. So this is maybe not very much. So maybe back that off a little bit. And that'll give us a little bit more um, negative space. And you'll just have to play with it and see what works for you. OK, let's put the shirt color back. And so this is, some, this is what it should look like, assuming a good Mary and Peel. All right, we're going to hit OK. And this is what our image is going to look like. So now all we have to do is go up here and hit print, or you can, you know, view the raw data. Um, but again, since we, we just did it and knock me black out, I think you're fine there. Look in the image that we just did a few minutes ago. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate. So over in our layer panel, I'm going to right click on the photograph layer and I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm just going to turn that off. I just, there, there's so many things that can go wrong. Uh, it's always good to keep your original untouched. So I'm going to make a layer mask by clicking on that layer at the bottom of the panel with the square and the piece of paper. Or again, you can go over here to layer and choose layer mask, reveal all. And now I'm just going to go up to my magic wand tool and I've got a tolerance of 15 right now. You want to make sure that contiguous is unchecked. And let me show you why. If you check contiguous, it's only going to it's only going to select the black that is touching. So you'll see the nostrils and the wall, none of that has been selected. 
um, only the black that is touching another black. So we're going to undo that and we're going to uncheck contiguous. And now I'm going to go into the blackest part and now we have all that black with the marching ants. Making sure that our layer mask is selected, I'm just going to shift F5 and choose black. Now, on a layer mask, when you fill your selection with black, it erases it, but it, it only it, it hides it, so it doesn't really erase it, it hides it. If you were to hit delete, it's gone forever and you can't get it back. So that's what's handy about a layer mask, is we can adjust that accordingly. So I'm going to hit OK, and then Command D or Control D to, rem to deselect it. And so now we can, sorry, we can add this black back and we can see, um, you know, how that did. And so what we might want to do is if we don't think it got rid of enough or if it got rid of too much, um, we can erase. Now, one of the things, uh, let me put that black back on. So here's our layer mask. And like I said, one of the things that I was concerned with is that we're missing a lot of that cheek. See? So I want to go back over here to the layer mask and I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to paint in white. And so all you have to do is click this up here that will always default you to white on the top and black on the bottom. But you can check the arrow to go back and forth. And I'm just going to go up to my brush tool and I'm going to go into the uh, legacy brushes. All right, click on this brush with the folder icon and we're going to go over and it opens this panel that you can move around. We'll go to brushes and we're going to go to the default brushes. So that's under legacy. I have a lot of brushes. Um, and so we're going to choose the legacy brushes which come with your version of Photoshop. But if you're using another uh, software, you're going to want to choose like a round, stiff brush. Um, but you want a little bit of a, not a, just a round edge. Um, so we're going to go with this round point stiff or, you know, something like that, round angle, whatever it is that you want to use. Uh, and we're just going to take our magnifying glass, increase the size a little bit, and get our brush and build that chin back. And so you can see that I'm just building, let me just turn this off for you so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just building back this chin a little bit. And you might make your brush smaller. I'm just gonna go in here I want to keep the rag, kind of the raggedy edges. But I just want to build some of that back up. I just felt like we missed too much of the chin. So continue doing that until it gets, you know, the way you want it. All right, and assuming that's the way you want it, I'm not going to keep you all here all day for this. Um, let's go ahead and put our black back on there. And then view, fit on screen. And that is what it looks like. So let's disable that layer mask by right clicking and choosing disable. Um, and you can see that here, let's. So that's what our image looks like. And when we click on the layer mask, that is what's going to print right there. Now, let me show you why that saturation is important. So if you remove these saturation and levels, it's going to give you a duller print. So by adding the levels adjustment, let me just make that a clipping mask. By adding that levels adjustment, it just makes it richer and deeper. And then the hue saturation just really brings out the yellows and the reds and the pinks. You don't have to do that. 
but I just feel like it gives a much cleaner image. Now, one other cool thing, and I'm going to switch the switch our brush, and I'm going to go over to the round brush. And what I don't want is all these pieces around the neck. Um, that's just going to be messy, and it, there's just no reason to have it. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to hit that and choose black. So again, just that arrow back and forth. And right bracket key makes your brush bigger. Left makes it smaller. Whoops. And I'm just going to go in and erase all this gunk around the neck that doesn't add anything but could actually cause a problem. Uh, now notice I went too far, so we can do X, which is going to change it back to white, and I can just come in and just paint that back in, then hit X again and go back to black, and just clean all this up, okay? And that is all you have to do. And now we will export this. And I'm not going to do a perfect job. Like I said, you, you guys probably have no interest in watching me do all that. And so now um, we are done. It looks like that. And we will export this. We're going to save it as a PDF this time because, again, all of our restoration, everything is done. We want to save this as a vector. So we're going to merge, layer, merge visible, and then we're going to delete the original and the bottom layer. Now you may want to save this as your file before you do this, but I'm done for the moment, and I have this multiple times. So we're going to delete those layers, file, save as, and I've already done this. So this is going to be Kima, um, and then you're going to go to Photoshop, change this to a Photoshop PDF. Do not save it as layers, and hit Save. And then I'll meet you in ProRep. Okay, so now we are back in ProRep, and I'm just going to open that copy. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And color adjust just to make sure everything's good. Um, this is a PDF, so we, we don't have to do anything really here. Um, I think I'm going to go with graphics. I want, I want the most accurate color. And since it's a PDF, it's really no longer a photograph. So I think we're going to leave it like that. And I'm going to hit OK, right click, rip only, view raw data, hit, hit the black so we can make sure and everything looks good there. So now all we're going to do is print it. So all you have to do here is press print. I've already printed it multiple times, so I'm not going to. So on the left hand side we have the image that was pressed with no color correction and it was printed from a png and on the right hand side we have the one that was color corrected now both of these were pressed and finish pressed at 305. Um, now it would be even worse if it was 310 it would definitely be worse um, and frankly on standard or forever laser dark standard two-step or forever laser dark it's really not too bad the color change but now let's take a look at what happens um, you know when you reduce the temperature now on this one you can clearly see um, the orange is just better um, the significantly better and I know that people struggle with orange and red is also can be a challenge. Now the red turned out pretty good um, and that one was 15C, 100M, and 100Y. Um, but so this is with color correction and finished pressed, pressed and finished at 260 Fahrenheit 
for 30 seconds each with parchment paper. And this one over here, um, this is the one that was not color corrected, pressed at 305. And then here is the, sorry, this one is the one that was pressed at 260. And again, that orange, it just really makes a difference. So if you want the best color, press and finish press at 260 degrees Fahrenheit and whatever the uh, Celsius conversion is. Okay, and then quickly we will take a look at the graffiti image. And that one is even more significant. So the one on the left, pressed and finished pressed at 305 with parchment paper. And the one on the right is press and finished pressed at 260. And there really is no question on this one at all. Um, it's just far more vivid. Look, look at the reds and the yellow. It's just better all the way around. So I highly recommend that you reduce your temperature to 260 for your press and finish press. So I hope you guys got a lot out of doing or watching this video. I certainly got a lot out of making it. And I can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thanks.